And now that we have all those helpful items, we can use it to uh, just de uh, decrease the pollution from uh, cars and factories and fossil fuels. Fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas. Coal is the fossilized remains of plants and animals that lived millions of years ago. Coal was first burned by the Romans. Oil was the uh, first oil well was drilled in Titusville, Pennsylvania in 1859. And gas, natural gas created from coal, was first used in gas lighting in 1792. Okay, that's very good to know. And now let's do some stack scrubber on these stacks. Um, I believe you're supposed to do it on the stacks, so I could be wrong. Perhaps you're supposed to do the uh, pipe sealer first. Uh huh. It helps cut down, it doesn't completely eliminate um, all the thing that. all the uh, pollutants that are uh, released, sadly. And finally, a catalytic converter, which helps reduce pollution from automobiles. All right, so I think I think that might be it. I think we might have uh, fixed everything at this point. Let's see. Now we can uh, play with the meters, and we want lots of wave and tidal power. We want lots of sun power. We want lots of wind power. And now we're going to decrease coal power. No more dependence on fossil fuels nuclear power or this one which I think is geothermal power not quite sure and it's an acceptable solution for the environment and solves the puzzle right right okay there we go we just saved the environment okay so we saved the universe we've saved the environment we saved George Washington uh oh, why do I need a comb? I, d I don't need a comb. Yes, we saved the universe, we saved the environment, and we saved George Washington. Now it's time to comb my hair. All right, here we go, discovery of radio. What happens in order to solve this exhibit is that you get batteries. No, you get batteries and a radio. And you need to speak to all the inventors. Here's the first one. He needs a book by Maxwell, a Scottish scientist. And this is Mr. Hertz. So we can't do much in his room because he needs his book, but we can do... We can solve a puzzle. Alright. Hmm. All right, there you go. The top of the screen is all yellow. That's how I figured out where everything was supposed to go. This can go here. This can go there. This looks like it does not go there at all. There we go. All right, so now we've got the uh, coil working, his transmitter. Now on to the next room. Where our next guy, he's, he, who is this guy? This is, this is Marconi, who worked on the uh, wireless telegraph, and now he's unconscious. There's a 90% possibility, uh, probability that he can be revived with some form of illumination. So that means we use the flashlight on him, and he wakes up. And his transmitter is destroyed. There was a transmitter in the other room, but as we saw, it's not working, because Hertz needs Maxwell's book. Ah, I didn't mean to look at that again. So let's go uh, to this next room. This is where Alexander Graham Bell, he's doing things. And here is finally, he needs a transmitter and something that converts 
voices to electrical signals. Now Alexander Graham's bell, Alexander Graham Bell's telephone transmits uh, voices to signals. Now this is Reginald Fessenden. Now what you have to do is give him a radio. He likes it, but it's too small for him. So let's take a book while he's uh, busy. And this is Maxwell's book. So now we go all the way back to the first room. We give Maxwell's book to Mr. Hertz. Fortunately, or I mean hopefully, that will uh, fix his transmitter. Or it will allow him to uh, use his transmitter. He might need some batteries. Let's give him the batteries. All right. Now we've got the transmitter. We're going to have to take that book back, by the way. Now that we have a working transmitter, we can give it to Marconi. He will use it on his uh, wireless telegraph. And let's look at that. That is Morse code. Have I looked at everything that there is to look at in this room? No, I haven't. I need to solve this puzzle before he will start transmitting anything. Okay. That makes sense. He wouldn't be able to hear anything from his transmitter if it wasn't transmitting anything. Uh-oh. There we go. And now he's getting a long message in Morse code. Now we look at the Morse code uh, chart. <coughs> and it says you find a magnet in the drawer of the workbench. Great, so let's grab that magnet and let's grab the transmitter. And on to Alexander Graham Bell. Now what's his problem? He can do clicks but not voices. But he needs a magnet. Let's give him that magnet. Uh-huh. Oh. He needs us to uh, fix his uh, equipment before the uh, magnet will work. This, uh, this particular puzzle appears a lot in uh, this particular exhibit. As you can tell, I've had to... Uh, I've had to do mixing and matching of all sorts of various things. Alright. Looks good so far. And there you go. We fixed uh, Mr. Bell's telephone. Now let's give him that magnet. Hello. Hello. Alright, it works. And now, here we are, back at Mr. Uh, I'm already forgetting his name, but he's the Canadian guy, right? Reginald Fessenden, that's right. What was that information? Let me read that again. He made the first transmission on December 24th, 1906. Alright, so now we need to uh, give him the transmitter and give him the microphone, like he said. Return my book! Okay! We return the book, and, th and thus he has invented the radio. So, all those people working separately, but all of them together, helped create the radio. That's sort of what science is like. A bunch of people working separately, but all together, they help each other out. 